Inspired by the infamous Ricardo Lino, I'm going to be going through every skate I skated in 2022 and ranking them from my least favorite to my favorite and explaining why. There's a chance I forgot about a skate that I actually skated this year because I'm just going off my videos and I didn't get to make a lot of videos in 2022 so uh, let me know if I forgot one. But starting off with one that I was the most disappointed in and I'm still so sad about and still have hopes that I'm going to be able to actually skate at some point, you can definitely guess it, it is the the Adapt. Uh, and this is the latest Adapt. The Adapt was kind enough to send me for a review. Um, and I was so excited for this skate. As you probably heard, I've said it a million times. When I got the opportunity to try these skates out, I was so willing and so ready to be an Adapt boy, man. Like I was so into it. I love the quality. I love the look of the skate. Even though a carbon skate has never appealed to me before, I've never felt like I needed a carbon skate. I just really was getting behind the Adapt brand and the way they do stuff you know just the high quality handmade like ethically built skate that's meant to last a long haul i just it seemed like a lot of things that are a top priority for me when it comes to buying normal products in general but ultimately this was a huge letdown for me with it being the most painful skate i've ever skated it just and that's not because of the skate it's because of the size i was given now uh, i did get this custom built to my foot size with into the millimeter by Peter at Adapt. So technically they should fit me, but they just really don't. Like uh, everything from my toes being cramped at the end to the worst part is there's like a pressure point here on the cuff that is right on the bone. And I just, I can't last more than like two minutes. I still have in the back of my mind that I'm gonna get one of those like hotspot remover clamps that are only available in America. If it was on Amazon, I would've got it by now, but it's not on Amazon. So yeah, anyway, uh, and I'm gonna maybe try to get that or I'll go to like a ski shop or something, get them to heat mold it. But uh, ultimately I think they are just too small for me, which is a shame because I did have one really good session on these that I really enjoyed. Like it, when somehow I got past the pain for one day and these performed amazingly and I actually really liked it. Now I just, I can't even put them on, man. I put them on I'm like, yeah, I can give them one more go. And it's like instantly I'm in too much pain to skate them. And for that reason, they're my least favorite skate from the year. I wanted to like those skates so bad, man. <laughs> I really wanted to skate them. And I feel like this is the only opportunity I'll ever have to skate them. I cannot afford to buy an Adapt skate. And the fact that it doesn't fit, you know, it, it hurts, man. <laughs> it feels like such a waste. And a huge part of me doesn't want to give up on them. This could change if I do get them heat molded and I get that pressure point worked out and I actually get to skate them. These could easily bump up to number one but we'll see. I wanna say my second least favorite, probably my fourth favorite skate, we'll say it like that, okay, uh, is the USD Carbon. If you've seen a trend here, um, once again, I'll remind you, I, I've never been a real fan of carbon skates. It just seems like extra money to me, more than any benefit, and uh, even skating them. And for that reason, the whole life of the USD Carbon, and even like gods and stuff, they've never really appealed to me. I've never really wanted to skate them, but I had the opportunity to try these out for a review. And I took it, but I definitely went into it being like, I'm probably not going to like these, which definitely didn't help. But yeah, these had some really bad pressure points, just like the Adapts, very similarly. Not nowhere near as bad though. They definitely fit a lot better. And yeah, I did have a good session on them. The sole plate was huge, which was nice. I, I get, like had so much confidence to do like Marcos and stuff. And I did have a good fun couple sessions on them. The only reason it's this low on the list is just because... Uh, it was just kind of boring to me and uh, I've never been a fan of the carbon skates. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a good skate. Yeah, with the USD carbons, I was kind of testing out doing a review of a skate in a shorter amount of time, not skating for as long, similar to what Lena does. But uh, yeah, I did mostly feel like I didn't give that skate a fair chance. So I don't know if I'll do that, but it is hard to fully commit to a skate for a long time because it ultimately just hurts my skating because I'll finally get used to a skate before switching to a new one. You know, which is like resetting, at least mentally, all the time. Now, my third favorite skate from the year. This one was very hard to choose. It was very close, but it had to be the uh, new Mesma skates, the Return of the Throne. Now, I loved skating this skate. It felt real nice. And this is definitely, I would say, the best, one of the best out-the-box setup skates I've ever had that isn't an Aeon. The frame and boot setup just seemed to work together really well. The sole plate was so fun. I absolutely loved the shape of that backside roof. It was so nice to do all H-block tricks in. And the frame and sole plate combo, it was like it really locked tricks in and I really, really liked it. It was super fun. Uh, the only thing I didn't like about that lock is that 
that made switch-ups kind of hard. They felt a lot more jumpy rather than pivoty, if that makes sense. And uh, it was kind of bugging me a bit. But the only reason this is this low on the list is because of the liner. I think the liner was an absolute flop on that skate. Uh, it made the fit like not work. It means you'd hit the like down or upsize for no reason, even though the shell fits. And uh, I don't like a skate that you have to straight away replace something on, you know, uh, like you have to to make it fit. So that was the the only downside of that skate. This definitely would have been way higher. And I'm sure the newer Mesmers, which have a different size liner, a different toe box on the liner, the, that'll be much better. And uh, yeah, if, it, if I got one of those, it would definitely rank higher in this list, I think. But uh, the one that beat it out at my second favorite skate of the year was the Rollerblade Blank SK, the Sean King Pro Skate. I was very surprised with the skate. I definitely had complaints about the weight, but uh, overall, I did really enjoy the skate. I think I skated somewhat my best in the skate. It was the first one I had for the year. I did accidentally leak it early, but Rollerblade didn't tell me I wasn't allowed to post videos about it yet. So um, I don't think Rollerblade's ever gonna send me skates again, which sucks, but uh, I did really like the skate. It worked super well. It felt a lot like an SL to me, but it's not razors, which was nice. You know, and uh, yeah, it was a great liner. It was a really good fit. Even though my feet were screwed at the time, it, I, it could work with uh, different insoles for me. But even without the insoles, the one that it came with stock was exceptionally good. It actually had arch support, which was nice. As soon as you took the stock frame off, this skate was like pretty much perfect to me. I kind of and gutted that I don't have the skate anymore. And I really, really want to get on the blanks again. I want that new pigeon colored gray one, the team one so bad. Don't know if it's going to happen. But yeah, I was very, very impressed with the blank skates. The only reason I put them by the Mesmers is probably because they fit good out the box. And uh, even stock with the frames, they're still kind of more skatable than the Mesmers really were out the box. Uh, but yeah, the frame that comes stock on the blanks, I was not impressed with at all. Now, you can probably guess what my number one skate is here. Because it's the skate I skated the most this year and are still currently skating. And that is the Them 909. Now this is a skate that I didn't think I would ever be skating. I, I got the 908s right when they came out. It's probably how a lot of you found me and uh, they really destroyed them for me. I couldn't stand those skates. Like uh, the sole plate, the flicks, the how long they lasted, everything just did not impress me and it put me off them forever, man. But the thing that really put me off the most was well, I say this every time, a false lock. It used to false lock for me, particularly on alley-oop soles where I would like land an alley-oop sole, it feels like it's locked in, and I lean into it and it would just come out, like the heel would pop out. Now this one here I got because not only is it the 909, the next boot up, but also it had a brand new sole plate on it, the new sole kit that has a, a bit wider heel. It was like night and day. I jumped on the skate and I, I didn't expect to like it. And I absolutely loved it, man. It was like everything I wanted. It's like an M12 to me, but with a bit wider sole plate. Yeah, which is the kind of skate I want, like something with no... It's not like too, it's a bit old school feeling, you know, there's nothing too new like tech about it. There's no like crazy nice backslide, no massive sole plates. It's like right in the middle in a really good place. And uh, I really, really enjoyed skating it. And out the box, it was really good too. The stock frame, I really liked. It was probably my favorite flat frame I've skated ever. I didn't get to skate it for too long though. It became clacky, which sucked. I had to get rid of it because of the clacking sounds it was making. Uh, which was very, very disappointing. But the groove on that, I think, was great. It felt real nice to do things like soyaos and like switch groove tricks. It was a really nice height. It wasn't too tall. It wasn't too uh, like wheel bitey. It was really nice. There's no frame that's been the same since. The 50-50 prime frame here I'm skating is fine though. It's really good. I have, don't have complaints about it. But it's not the same as the them one. Um, and then the liner too, the liner, the stock liner on these is good as well. I had no complaints. I've got the premium intuition liners here and uh, they're more comfortable, but I'm not the biggest fan. They're kind of like, they're a little bit too big. Like it adds so much height and they're so squeaky, man. And they stink. So <laughs> I'll make a video about that ASAP. I know I've been working on that for ages. I need to actually do it. I do like the setup. And uh, it has started to wear out quite a lot, which I'm super gutted about. Uh, and actually, speaking of the false lock, I think it started to give me the false lock. I might finally have proof. I'm going to pull up a clip now of me getting absolutely rolled on the local p rail I have here on Alley Soul. And uh, maybe you guys can break it down for me and tell me. This happened last time I thought I had proof of the false lock. But tell me that it's 
that's actually just my bad technique that made me fall out of this alley soul. Uh, I just switch soul as well. But yeah, I've never, no other skate has had me fall out of alley souls like the Dems do. And I feel like at this point, it's doing that to me because I've worn it out enough. The toe on this is like completely gone. It is the heel that comes out, but I have a feeling it's to do with the toe. And the toe is completely rounded now, like I've so worn this down. And I'm pretty gutted about that because uh, I can't really afford new 909s. This is still in a skatable situation, but yeah, they're wearing down pretty bad. And I, I mean, I haven't had them that long. I got them last year. So um, compared to my experience with the M12s, these definitely don't last as long. Uh, but I'll do a follow-up uh, review on these about the wear and tear at some point, hopefully in the next few days. But yeah, that's my all the skates I skated in 2022 and how I rank them. Uh, I'd love to know you, what you guys think. I'm sure a lot of you guys skate more skates than me, which is cool. So let me know what your favorite skate of the year was and why. I'd love to know. And uh, yeah, huge thanks to my patrons. They should be scrolling past right now. They're the best. And uh, go for a skate. I'll see you out there. No, I won't. I'm in New Zealand. <laughs>